Hey there, dazzling dumplings. Welcome to today's video. I'm going to be talking a little bit about the brands that I enjoy supporting and um, the brands that I don't hate. Before we get started, I just wanted to throw it out there that if I don't mention a brand in this video, it does not mean that I think that they are evil and full of terrible troll people. And on the flip side of that, if I do mention a brand and they are full of terrible troll people, you know, just leave me a comment and I will make note of that. All right, so the criteria that I use to make this list is threefold. The first is the innovation of the brand. I'm very bored by the cosmetics industry uh, overall right now. There's a lot of the same stuff just being churned out, which annoys me. I like to see brands that are coming out with new sorts of things in their formulations, in their packaging, in their marketing even. Um, yeah, that I'm not bored by essentially, but that are still creating good quality products and that seem to be putting effort into their products as opposed to just repackaging shit. Second thing is inclusivity. As a makeup artist for film and TV, I put makeup on everyone. So I don't have the luxury of using brands that don't have a good shade range for their complexion products. And also, I'm not an asshole. And then the last thing is whether or not the brand is cruelty free and then little bonus points for brands that have environmentally friendly packaging. And then last thing before we get into it, this is not a list of like every single one of my favorite products or even all my favorite products from these brands. I really just wanted to give you guys like some an idea of when I'm looking for a product. These are the brands that I sort of search through first to see if they have something um, and I'll, you know, kind of shout out some of my favorite products within these companies, but this is more just about giving you guys my mental Rolodex of, how old are you? Do you know what a Rolodex is? <laughs> I'm curious, um, of what brands I go to. Also, these are in no order whatsoever. First up, Hourglass. Little pricey, gorgeous packaging, solid formulas, some very innovative products. I love any and all ambient lighting powders. I use them a lot on set. They're very versatile. They give a really nice finish to the skin. Um, also, I feel like some of their packaging is refillable, reusable, which is cool. They are definitely a brand that I would say puts a lot of effort into their formulations and making consistently really good products and smart color choices. And then obviously, like all of the brands on this list, they are cruelty free and they do have a good shade range. When I was doing my makeup for this video, I tried to use the brands that I'm talking about and for this look that I have, I used the ambient lighting powders. I used the goldenish one and the ivoryish one from this little mini palette. Marc Jacobs Beauty. Their eyeshadows make me feel t more than is appropriate to feel about eyeshadows. I love them. I have several of these palettes. The colors are great and beautiful. I'm wearing them on my eyeballs in this moment. Ignore this. I depotted some of them. Um, but I'm wearing this rusty color and then this like fuchsia looking color. Similar to Hourglass, I feel like they're genuinely putting effort into their formulations and their color choices, which is like surprisingly and unfortunately rare. Um, I'm curious. I'm just putting this out there if anybody knows. They work with the makeup artist Hung Van Gogh a lot and I'm wondering if he does any consulting for the creation of their line because I know he's a brand ambassador to some extent but he is my favorite beauty makeup artist hands down and I really love their products and he's a smart artist and I'm curious about if he has any involvement in the development of their brand if you know that tell me. Kogan Doe I wasn't sure if I was going to put on the list. Very expensive and they don't have a ton of foundation shades, but they do have evenly dispersed foundation shades. I think they have like 12 colors uh, for each of their foundation lines. Um, their foundations are my favorite. I hate that they're my favorite because they're so expensive and I feel a little guilty because I usually don't have to pay for the makeup that I use at work. Um, and so I'm sorry, but it's the truth. I just, I love them. I use the Aqua Foundation and the Moisture Foundation. And um, I would rather see, and there's one other brand on the list that falls into this as well. I would rather see a brand that doesn't have a ton of shades, but they're evenly dispersed amongst people's skin tones than a brand that has a lot of shades, but like, a bunch of them are beige. You know, if 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 you only have six foundations, but two are light, two are medium, and two are dark and actually dark, 
I would rather see that. And you're like a fairly small brand um, than, you know, somebody with 12 foundations, but eight of them are beige. That bothers me, to put it lightly. I did put them on the list because they are my favorite foundations. They are innovative formulas and the colors themselves are fantastic. So they don't have as many as like Urban Decay or something, but they are really, really good shades. There's really not a bad one in the bunch and they are cruelty free. And if this is a list of brands that I like to support, this is definitely one of them. Okay, this is the next brand that I was like, do I wanna put you on it? And it's Glossier. And if I'm just being honest, with myself I have to put it on the list because I do like this brand a lot. I like the image, I like their marketing, and I do like their products a lot. I, it's For some reason I want to not like them, which I feel terrible about because have you ever seen that meme that's Lisa Simpson and she's giving a presentation and it says, welcome to my TED talk, and it says like, why hating popular things doesn't make you an interesting person? <laughs> That's like one of my favorite memes of all time because I like to like stuff. So uh, I'm torn within myself about why I like have this little urge to think Glossier is annoying. I don't know. But the thing is, I do think that they put effort into their formulations. I do think that they make some things that are innovative and I love boy brow and cloud paint. Also, they make my favorite perfume. Glossier U smells incredible, and I'm not one of their affiliate people think- oh, I should have mentioned that. None of this is affiliate or sponsored or anything. This is just my beliefs going straight from my heart into your brain. But yeah, despite the fact that I have an irrational desire to dislike Glossier, I do think that they make good stuff and I like it. And this is the other one, in case that wasn't clear, that they only have five shades, but they, you know, at least cross a gap. And I understand from a budget perspective, um, as you're getting started as a brand, it's expensive to make a lot of different colors. So if you're going to use that excuse, at least, you know, cover your bases. At this point though, they can definitely afford to make more shades. So I hope that they do, cause that is sort of, I'm going like, gonna do that soon, maybe, yeah. Next up, Danessa Mirix. She is a makeup artist slash photographer, brand owner, uh, fantastic products. A lot of cool artistry based stuff that I enjoy. Her highlighters are gorgeous and the shade range is just absolutely fantastic. And she definitely is putting stuff out that I don't already see all the time. She has a lot of cool eye pigments and um, yeah, just like really full coverage products. And you can tell that she puts a lot of care into what she's creating. And I um, I'm a fan. Jackie Megiddo. Jackie was my beauty teacher 10 years ago, and she is an incredible human being and makeup genius. And she has come out with a makeup line and it's fantastic, especially the foundations, which I love for people with oily skin. She's originally from Zimbabwe and she created them for wear in hot climates for people with oily skin. The shade range is fantastic. I mean, she's the person who taught me how to base match and I love her. And I know firsthand from knowing her how much she has put into this and the formula is really innovative. It's water-based and it's super thin, but it's really full coverage. And it's just like a lifesaver for people with really oily skin and if it's gonna be really hot out. And it is of course cruelty free. And like I said, the shade range is. I'm so happy that Fenty Beauty is more than just like a celebrity sponsored brand. I think that Rihanna is a badass obviously, but she seems to really care. I think the matchsticks are super smart and I love the contouring shades. Obviously the shade range is, you know, famously good. And I haven't really been disappointed in anything that I've tried, but the matchsticks are really smart and I really like them for contouring. More than like any other brand, when they email me, I actually click on it based off of the subject line, which I sh I gotta give props for that random thing. There was one the other day that was like, you're uninvited. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> and I clicked on it and I was like, oh, cause that's the name of the, got it. Well played. Also, I hate going to things, so I don't know why I'd be upset about being uninvited, but I don't want Rihanna to uninvite me from things. And last but not least, RCMA, a staple in most makeup artist kit. They have two super iconic products. The No Color Powder is still my favorite translucent setting powder, and their cream foundation is, like, I don't think I know a makeup artist that doesn't have it, and it has, you know, pretty much every shade you can imagine, and adjusters, which is pretty incredible. And while they have not necessarily come out with a bunch of new innovative things recently, those two things are still like the industry standard and they definitely paved the way with them. I don't know if you know, but 
RCMA stands for Research Council of Makeup Artists. So yeah, they are OGs for sure, and uh, that's the end of this list. As I mentioned in the beginning, I'm sure that there are brands that I either forgot to mention or that I haven't tried yet. I would love, 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 love for you to leave in the comments the brands that you not just like the products of, but that you actually like supporting, because I'm always looking for more, and um, I like makeup, <laughs> and I like stuff that uh, people, companies that are not shitty. So tell me about them, and I will check them out. All right, thank you so much for watching. The next video in this series, I don't know that it'll be the immediate next video on my channel, but it will be soon, is going to be about why brands make the decisions that they make. And I'm really excited about that one. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter at Kikiji Makeup. You can also follow my company at Salt New York and like this video. And if you don't do all of those things, then I will fight you to the death. Okay, uh, we'll see you guys in a couple of days.